Hello and welcome back to the Car Talk podcast, the show where we talk about the latest transportational opinion and the car news. Got that bit the wrong way round. We also have a theme as well this week, uh, like we do always. This week it is deceased car brands, and I am joined as usual by the Grand Teens, Bailey Prickett. You alright, Bailey? I'm good. How are you? I'm um, not too bad. And also this week, we've got a special guest. He is a fellow podcaster, a fellow car YouTuber. He's also a journalist and he's only 15 and he's got a lower voice than me. This week, <laughs> we've got Daniel at the house uh, Hello. from Daniel Hello. Drives. And all things also. You're right, Daniel. I am very well. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I've been looking forward to this and a uh, very good intro as well. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> there is certainly a lot to talk about uh, and if you're if it's okay with you Bailey I just want to jump right in there uh, and ask you about your well your two car channels really um, you've got one on your own and one with your mate uh, how did they come to be so it was I would say mid 2019 and it's me and my friend Matthew who lives locally and goes to the same school as me we are both car obsessed and bicycle obsessed and just anything with wheels and we sort of came to the conclusion that maybe we should start a YouTube channel and, you know, share our passion with other people. So that's when All Things Auto was born, January 2020, I think. And when lockdown started, it, it gave us even more of a chance to, you know, film bike ride vlogs and stuff like that. My, my personal they channel... They are hilarious as well. They are good yeah. fun to film as well. <laughs> my personal channel, Daniel Drives, was a bit later. Um, I wanted to start my own YouTube channel personally, but I just... I don't know, I was a bit awkward with it. I'd never really liked being in front of the camera, but I started one, and I haven't gone back. It's just amazing, really, and YouTubing's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. You, you'll both know this. You'll both know this. I can agree with you there, Daniel. Um, and out of interest, I know you, you post quite a lot of, obviously, car content, yeah. being a car enthusiast. Um, that leads me on to my next question. Which is your favourite car? Well, that's, or your that's dream a good car. question. Yes, that's an, quite an easy question for me. It's always the same answer. Um, people <coughs> may shake their heads, but the Fiat Panda, specifically the 100 HP, because I think it's different and very cool in my eyes, but, you know, some people yeah. will be doubting me. But, yeah, Fiat Panda. Well, yeah, it's, it's definitely a more justified car than uh, the types of cars that we've got on the car news uh, this week. I yes. can tell you that much. Um, <laughs> one other question before before we move on to that um, is... I've fucking forgotten it. I've forgotten the question. <laughs> we've just walked in and I've forgotten the question I was going to ask. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, only 15 and you're a yeah. lot better than all of this than me. Podcast, <laughs> uh, journalism... You write for Drive Tribe as well, don't you? As well, like, do I you do, work for them or yes. do you just write write stuff on there? I just write stuff, really, and obviously, when articles get promoted, then you sort of earn a, a bit of an income. It's not a lot, but I've I've also written for magazines. I'm I'm currently in the middle of writing a fifteen hundred word article for a certain wow. magazine. I can't reveal too much yet because I'm meant to keep it quiet, but oh, okay. that'll be coming up soon. But yeah, writing is just. It's just great. Again, it's just uh, it allows you to share your passion with other people, and that's really nice. That's really impressive, Daniel. I love that. I mean, thank you. I can't write for anything, but I, <laughs> I'd like to write about cars. Yeah, <laughs> if yeah. I could, it is a lot of fun, definitely. So uh, we'll move it on then to all of our car news that we've all uh, collated this week. Uh, do you want to start, Bailey, with yours? Well, I actually really do want to start this uh, month because I've got yes. something very exciting. Um, now, Pagani, as you know, is an Italian brand, um, and they make cars every few hundred years. Um, yeah. Yes. And the new one they've made is a Pagani Hawaira R. Now, obviously, they made the Hawaira back in 2012, I believe, um, and now they're making a race um, track version, even though it's not allowed on a track. But anyway, it's got 838 brake horsepower. Um, it's a very similar chassis to the Zonda R. Um, uh, is obviously strictly for track only, um, but like the older model, um, it has a naturally aspirated V12 instead of having twin turbos um, like the road going version, which is pretty cool. All carbon fiber, um, and what's something that interests me as well actually is, is it has a six speed sequential 
gearbox, um, which only weighs 80 kilos. Oh, wow. So that's pretty cool. Um, this is what I love about Pagani. I think this has been picked up on in the past, is that all the, the legislation for the electric cars and that comes in. And I don't know how they get around it, but they do. And they're still yeah. releasing amazing 838 V12s. Yeah. Like this. I mean, they don't really care. They don't like rules <laughs> at all. They are Italian, and after all, yeah, I think that's been uh, picked up on in the past. But if you are interested as a car talk listener in buying one of these, and you get in, better <laughs> get in quick because uh, they're only making thirty of them, and it costs three point one million dollars, which in Ooh. English is about two point three million roughly. Yeah, it's a lot, um, but it looks amazing. It looks insane. It is phenomenal. Pagani really know how to design a car. They really, they do. really do. The interiors really as well, do. they're always chrome. Yeah, it just, it's just it got that ounce of, like, you know, antique, but also very, very expensive, which they are. Yeah. Um, you know, you, when you sit in one, I've certainly been close enough to one. I've I've seen, like, a, a Chinke at Goodwood. Um, yeah. yeah. The Chinke Roads, there's only five of them made. And you just, you just look inside, and you, just, you can see the price yeah, inside yeah. the car. It is a lovely thing, definitely. Certainly is. Um... Move on to you next, Daniel. With with uh, what have you got anything this week that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, obviously the Ford Mondeo. Um, Ford Mondeo's been collapsing very slowly this past, I'd say, ten years specifically. But Ford announced this week that it's going for good. And yes, obviously there's there's the people on Twitter and Instagram going, "Oh no, not the Mondeo," because it is quite iconic. But to be honest. I don't. I've never been mad on the Mondeo, so it's just another car that's going. And fair enough. I don't know. Mm. Mm, well, I'll tell you my my thing with this. So it's 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 going. They've said it's going next year, March two thousand and twenty-two. Okay. Now yeah. I'm not quite over it yet because it is sort of. I don't know. It's just one of them cars. It the, the later generations, they're not as nice to drive. They're a little bit too focused on comfort. And I think that's to do with the because it's like an international car. But one thing that I can't get my head around here is that the name is going to live on as an SUV. Yeah, and yeah. That, I thought, that does concern me a, bit, a little bit, actually. I thought that actually was only speculation, but it actually is happening. So it's to, to me, it's that's just, just kill it off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah, like so saying... Fresh. We're going to bring back the Jeremy Kyle show, but it's going to have nothing to do with Jeremy Kyle. He's not going to be in it, and it's going to be about yes. flower arranging. You know, <laughs> it is exactly that. Just kill it off. Well, it's like Top Gear, you know. Top Gear isn't, you know, Top Gear without the trio. And now they've replaced yeah. them with those three other presenters, whoever they are, because um, <laughs> I don't watch it. Well, um, yeah. It's completely different. I mean, it's doing it's doing a lot better now, I think. I think they've got their own source of fan base now. But uh, Yeah, yeah. I've been watching it and have been watching it since the old trio left, but just because I'm interested in how they're doing. And I'm going to say that now especially that it is Top Gear is becoming a good car show again. But part of me does think they should have completely got rid of the Top Gear name and started fresh with a new car show on the BBC. I, think I agree with you there. Yeah. I think that would have been yeah. a you know clever idea. Yeah, because I think what they wanted to do with that I, I like the fact that the fact that we just got onto this now but um yeah one one thing they wanted to do with that is the i think they wanted to sort of rub the fact that they had the right to the track and the stig and everything in clarks and hammond and may's faces and say look yeah. we've got all this so they tried to rework it i remember the first series they made the track into like an assault course do you remember that daniel yeah yeah I do. they made like a ramp and stuff and a, a mud bath and things like that and the first episode was them driving robin reliance around and you think well <laughs> it's just been done before but I know, better I know. but um, yeah. chris evans was oh there's only one word for it uh bad and uh yeah. any, any words <laughs> like that but yeah he, he was just too shouty for that show uh, not right for the job, yeah. He wanted no, it to be live as well. He just wanted to ruin it. But yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he does sort of suit radio and that's his thing. He doesn't really want to do yeah. anything else because when yeah. he does something else, it ruins it. There is a massive difference between having the money 
for cars and being genuinely interested in cars. And if you compare Chris Harris to Chris Evans, for example, the difference is clear. Chris Evan, Chris Harris, sorry, is really interested in cars, and Chris yeah. Evans only likes cars because he can afford them. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I like that Rory Reed as well, who's moved to yeah. Auto Trader now. Um, but that's it, isn't it? You, I, I, congratulations to Chris Evans for having a go. He's not gonna deny the job offer, but yeah, uh, you know, he, he's he's like me. You know, he realised that he can do radio, but can't do Top Gear. I realised that I can do YouTube, but I can't do podcasts. So <laughs> here I am. Matthew, you're doing well. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> I feel like I'm making a complete hash of this so we're going to move quickly on to the new Citroen C4 um I'm very intrigued by this um partly because a lot of Citroens these days aren't very Citroeny um they're very much under Peugeot's thumb but this one I think looks absolutely fantastic and I have actually managed to see it in the flesh twice uh, because I've been up and down to my main Citroen dealer this week trying to source parts for me saxo so it is a really nice car it does look quite nice i do actually like the original shape it's quite different um yeah you know that the front kind of reminds me of the the cactus a little bit um yeah but a lot better um and it's it's almost got sort of it doesn't it doesn't look like an suv but i obviously it is yeah exactly so it's half and half isn't it this is what i like yeah these new cars that are going down this route um you know, that's about as far as I can go. I couldn't go any higher than that because then you've got a full-blown SUV. Yeah, it's kind of a coupe, isn't it, in a way? Coupe SUV. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking as and well. And it doesn't look that bad. I mean, we were talking about this just before we started recording, and I don't know if your yeah. listeners have seen it, but the advert for this car shows a load of old Citroens, which I do think is, is quite nice. It's got some nostalgic music in the background as well, and it's just celebrating Citroen's history. Which is nice. Exactly. Hopefully this is Citroen sort of getting back on the horse because if you look at the old C4s, you know, the first one, you know, had a few cool features. I remember when it was new. Uh, the second one was just, you know, what was it? It was just instantly <laughs> forgettable. Um, the cactus divided opinion, but then they brought out a new cactus and again it was forgettable they made it just all plain and sensible this one i think is to use a cheesy phrase the real deal yeah yeah they've learned from the past mistakes and all of the good things about citron are in that uh, hopefully um hopefully you can get it with petrol diesel or electric so you know there's, there's something for everyone yeah agreed yeah. i've got some good news yes Ooh. Good news. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have bought a new car, which would be much better than your new car, Matty. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid you're right there. <laughs> um, <laughs> viewers of the Grand Teen, if you are aware, uh, I've been, I made a video recently or, you know, a month ago now um, about me talking about my car being sold because I'm buying a new one. I'm currently in the process of buying my new old car is what I'm going to name it. But I'm not going to reveal anything yet um, as there'll be a separate video on the full reveal for that car. So I'm very excited about that. So mm. I just thought I'd mention it. Um, uh, I mean, I quite like uh, K t K11 Micras. So, you know, you've bought <laughs> yourself a good, uh, good car there. Especially in, in pink as well. I think it sets the design off nicely. Mm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. And... <laughs> <laughs> Any more car news, Bailey? I've got a few more uh, items to get through, but uh, if you've got anything else, do share. I do. Um, I have the new Aston Martin Vantage F1 edition. Now, as you know, this is the safety car for the upcoming F1 season. Um, it's obviously based off the previous Vantage. It's got another wing on the back, a bit of a facelift. Um it looks a lot more aggressive, which obviously to me is an appealing factor. Um, and it's going to have a 4-litre twin-turbo V8, so the same engine fitted to AMGs currently. Yeah. And produces 535 brake horsepower. And they're also making a road-going version of this, so looking forward to that. Yeah. The design is just... It's lovely, isn't it? It is, yeah. I really like it. 
Yeah, it's an impressive car. I think it, the, the standard vantage as well is just spot on, especially the rear end. It's 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 definitely um, you know, it's got the also it's got the style of Aston Martins and the luxury that they offer. Yeah. Um, but also it's got you know the excitement. That is a good looking car, but you have to forgive me here because I'm slightly confused. So you say F1 edition, like says here, celebrating its return to Formula One after more than 60 years away. Aston Martin has released this, but I, what, like, what is it for? Because I've never seen anything like that compete in F1, but I don't no, but know it's a lot a safe, about it. It's a safety car, Matty. So they, you know, they're on the. <laughs> <laughs> when they um then they do the first lap, they take them around the track, so they have a rolling start, and that's the car they follow. Oh right, okay. <laughs> I thought that was just done in like any car. Well, no, yes, it has to be a decent Astra. car, otherwise for the yeah, for they, the they, yes, they're gonna have an Astra diesel going round with the <laughs> F one cars behind them, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't work. Oh, is it going on sale to the public, or is it just so for this? So at the moment it's F1 only because oh. you know it just is, and they've got like a safety light at the you know the top safety yeah. light thing. I feel um, sorry for it, just confined to the track, you know. Well, that's that's where it needs to be. Hopefully, it's not designed on a track. Otherwise, you know what you know what happens <laughs> when it's designed on a track. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Um, I yeah, the, the front grille as well as something to note. I think it's sort of got no bottom end of the grill if you know what I mean it just sort of sinks mean, down yeah. into the ground so I think maybe that's a design error um, it looks like it's having I mean it could be showing its emotion there you know it's, yeah. it's screaming out of joy from the incredibly nice looks it has yeah I can't see the grill because there's currently an advert for NCS that won't go away <laughs> on my screen Um <laughs> That is that is a nice car. I, I I hope it's yeah. I hope we can see more of it because that just I can't believe yeah. that. Oh, it's gone. The ad's gone. Yeah, that is that's a nice grill. Um, can we move on to? We can our penultimate um new story this week, and it is the new Brabus version of the Smart Four Two. It is here. Um, God. it's the sporty version of the the Four Two, which nobody's ever bought um <laughs> and it is a 91 bhp cabrio ev oh my word. which again nobody's gonna buy um <laughs> so wait matty did, you, did i just hear that correctly it's got 91 bright horsepower <laughs> yes so here's here's the stats for you right zero to 60 10.9 seconds and that's to 62 wow. actually i was being generous no, there no no and how much does that cost? It's going to cost £40,000. Sorry. But here's the best... Yeah, £40,000. Oh, wow. But the best bit is, it says here that the tuning company, uh, Brabus, have managed to extract an extra 10 BHP. Um, so you get an extra 10. So it only had bloody 81 brake horsepower when it was just a <laughs> smart car. You know... I mean, come on. That's just... That that's just like the most stupid buy of twenty twenty one. I think. Yeah. You know, I don't think. I don't think you can get. I know exactly. I mean, I don't. I couldn't even name anyone I, that would want that. Yeah, maybe like a really, really rich person's son or something. But I just <laughs> they, they spent most of it more time painting it black than they have tuning the engine to get an extra yeah. ten PHP out of it. They have. Um, I, I, I do. What's think... next? They're going to remove, an, remove another seat. It's only oh, got two. I would. <laughs> yeah, I know. I do think it's it's a bit pointless and why, but as a car to look at, forgive me for saying this, but it's it's quite cool in the way that it's unusual. If you were to see one, you'd definitely give it a second look. Maybe not in the in a positive way, but I, I don't mind the looks of it actually. I can see why you do like the looks of it, Daniel, because I know you're sort of into that you know, sort of breeder cars. You know, you, you like yeah. you love the Fiat Panda, and that's quite reminiscent of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's definitely some some parts of it I like, um, which are I don't know actually. <laughs> none, of, <laughs> none of it. <laughs> this might the rear tempt diffuser. you. This might tempt you, Bailey. From a full battery, you get seventy-eight miles of range. Ooh. Yeah. 
Yeah, seventy-eight miles after. Yeah, what what are you paying for there, and who's going to buy it? But actually, looking looking at the front end, looking at the front end, you can actually see sort of if you you could well, you might have to look hard to see this, but a bit of Mercedes AMG GTR. You know that supercar yeah. they made, that green yeah. one. Yeah, just look yeah. a bit like that from the front end, just a bit cuter. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that actually. Yeah, I don't mind the look of the smart cars. Actually, I'd, I'd rather a four four than a four two, um, but the new ones aren't too bad at all, and they, you know, they're a lot better than they they were, the first ones, sort of thing. You know, not too bad. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, uh, moving on, we finally have uh, our last piece of news here, and it's an important one: uh, the all new two thousand and twenty one Renault Kangoo van has been unveiled and it gets a modern look and a new open sesame pillarless door system. Wow. I'm not interested. No, me neither. Uh, there's to also... me, it's just another van that probably will be up your arse when you're driving and have yeah. a go at you at roundabouts. Well, if, if, if you're not interested in that, you may be interested in the new Citroen Berlingo with its abracadabra tailgate. Um, <laughs> that is coming in 2022. It's, just, it's so tragic, <laughs> isn't it? It's dismal. <laughs> it's so dismal. So we're now going to move on to the theme of this week's podcast, which is deceased car brands, all the car brands that are no longer with us. Uh, we're going to reminisce and look back uh, at some of our favourite forgotten car brands. Um, the first thing we're going to discuss is what I've just said, our favourite forgotten car brand. Uh, would you like to start with yours, Daniel? Because it might be the same as mine. I, and mine. I've, I've kind of got two that I'm stuck between, and I know both of yours. I'll start with this. But um, Saab. Saab made some really, really good cars and aircraft. You you know that. Yeah, and yeah. They were just amazing, really. Um, they were, you know, quite quite good quality. They were interesting. They were different, and they were nice. If I put Saab aside, probably Rover. Obviously, yeah. Rover were nice. They were, you know, quite quite bad to drive sometimes, but they they were quite iconic, weren't they? British engineering and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, I think I think Rovers are you know more iconic than we think because you know it actually started the whole of the British sort of engineering and you know it, it gave us the Land Rover. Um, yeah. the first Land Rover um, and it just is sort of built up you know even with the looks and the styling you know a lot of other cars to follow have sort of been reminiscing of Rovers so I think yeah. it does play a really important part in British car motoring mm. well my favourite one the one I've picked is for this round is Rover um, it, ju- I, it just was like do you know what I mean it just had the quality, the British feel, uh, and like you said, Daniel, they did make some really awful cars, <laughs> awful marketing decisions, and um, I mean, a few cynics will say that they were always on strike, but the it's one of them where it's it's a bit like Alfa Romeo. For every bad car, there's a really, really, really good one um, yeah. that no one else sort of could come close to um and that's why that's my favorite like for example like you thought you sort of look back and you think well it was all lost by you know the late 90s when they were had things like you know the rover 100 not to dispute that as being a bad car but it wasn't sort of the rover we knew so you think oh it's you know that's it now i wasn't even alive and i was thinking that's it now <laughs> um and then they released the 75 which yeah it was part bmw but you know if you if you look at the design it was british it was rover and it was i i can't believe that car flopped it just shows the taste of the market have changed but it was a really really fantastic car i agree i agree um i do agree and i'd say i agree with daniel in the fact that um saab would be you know my favorite brand that's deceased um you know they were they were really sophisticated they were quite different um yeah. and they made some great cars you know the turbos really good uh i just really like them they're just different i like different things what was that car what was that car that saab made 
back in the day, I think it was the 90s, that didn't have a steering wheel, and instead it had a joystick in the middle. <laughs> and you, you steered it <laughs> by that. I, I think that was like a, a one-off 900. I remember when Top Gear done the film, and they showed it, yeah. Clarkson in like a flowery shirt with an afro driving <laughs> that round some cones. <laughs> yeah. It's probably part of the reason Saab aren't with us anymore, probably. Yeah. Well, that was what I was going to say. I'd like to come back to Saab in a minute. Um, Because if it's all right with you, we can move on to our forgotten brand that we'd each like to bring back. Um, Mine is Saab, but if anybody else wants to go ahead first and talk about the one that they'd bring back, the one that you think, with a bit of tweaking, would survive in today's market. I'd say Saab as well. Yeah? Not going to lie, yeah. Are we all saying Saab or...? I, I think, think so. so. If I was to <laughs> say no to Saab and say something different, I'd probably say something like maybe Daihatsu, who made yeah. a lot of good small cars, but you know they, it was a small company, you know, didn't have the funds and maybe a bit of a bad reputation. But I believe if they partnered up with like Suzuki or Toyota or something, yeah. I do think they could be a good sub-brand. That's a good shout, actually, but th- because there's an emerging market now for sort of budget cars... If you look at like Kia and Hyundai, they're like not budget anymore. They're expensive. So you've got the likes of Dacia, MG, um, Suzuki aren't even there anymore because all of their cars are hybrid, so they're expensive now. So yeah, there's yeah. an emerging sort of new space for these cheap cars to come in, and you know I like cheap cars as well. So <laughs> of no, course, Daihatsu could could easily come back and. Um, and be successful um yeah i'm 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 with you bailey with the one i'd bring back being saab um mm. i don't yeah. think i'd like I, I was thinking about this and i i wanted to say rover i'd love if it ro- if rover came back um but i just think that the 75 proved and if you think this yeah. was like 20 years ago that proved that our tastes were shifting to German uh-huh. cars. Um, and also, Rover kind of reminds me of like, you know, a dead sort of grandparent in a way. They teach you a lot. And obviously, Rover taught you taught us a lot about engineering. And, um, you know, obviously, it's like I said, gave us the Land Rover. But now yeah. that it's gone, it should stay gone. Yeah. Um, which is why I, I, I didn't choose Rover either. No, yeah. it's a, it was of its time, I think, Rover. And... I mean, to be fair to them, they're not, they weren't a manufacturer that just stood still sort of thing. They did try, well, like they went down every road to try and change yeah. themselves and uh, it just yeah. always, always come back to being a car that old people drive, even, yeah. though, <laughs> even though it was wasted on old people because the, you know, the 75 was brilliant, the Metro mm. was brilliant, um, but yeah, it was just... Uh, that that was the problem with them. So yeah, and with you, Saab definitely. I think yeah, Saab yeah, yeah. could. Don't you reckon if they made, they'd, they'd have to make an SUV, unfortunately, to have they any would, sort yeah. of chance. Um, but, but also, that I think because they are Swedish, you know, they're they're quite, um, you know, I'd say contrasted with Volvo. But in a way, yeah. I think they if they were to arrive now, they would sort of, you know, take bits and bobs from Volvo and sort of develop there. Um, you know, rep for well, that. that's but. it. A lot, a lot of the brands that we've still got today wouldn't exist if it wasn't for conglomerate manufacturing. You know, all yeah. stealing from other each other's parts bins. Um, but yeah, Saab just Saab just had something, and they had they did have, you know, a market the same way as Alfa Romeo did have. You know, a certain someone, a cool guy that'd buy them sort of cars. I I really want a. Uh, still a uh, Saab 900 coupe like when yeah, I have yeah. could afford it like I just still even though they don't make it anymore I just still picture that as like a car that cool men in their 30s drive and I'll be like that'll be me <laughs> yeah. one day but um yeah I'd quite like to um mention this is going a little bit off but um a brand that has now gone but yeah. I'm glad that's gone <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know if you. I don't know if you guys know what Skyon is. Obviously, it's Toyota's experiment um, oh, to yeah. making smaller cars that were basically more appealing. Well, trying to be more appealing to younger uh, drivers. Um, 
but as as they turned out they were terribly boxy um mm. yeah which matty you probably quite like anyway because you yeah. like boxy cars <laughs> but you know i'm i'm i just all all the cars they made or most of them they were sort of really boxy and i didn't i didn't like them at all no. um and you know in a way they didn't really lose out because obviously they owned by toyota it was kind of their side experiment side hustle as you would say in the 21st century yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> um that's that's a that's sort of a brand that i would that i'm happy that's gone if we're going to be like that but <laughs> i'm glad you mentioned that because that can move us on to uh current car brands that we think are in danger because I, I could talk about saab all day i love their attitude uh yeah, but we're, yeah. We, we've we've got to move on um so i mean go for it guys really because i've got quite a few here that i'm sort of thinking would not be here or may not be here soon um have you got any or well i'm not i'm not completely sure but maybe one i might be wrong but maserati yeah I i've think... got fiat yeah Fiat, yeah, that's a good yeah. call, and it is a shame, but yeah, yeah, I can see them going wrong at some point as well. Yeah, I mean, the whole F is it FCA, so Fiat Chrysler automobiles, yeah. so they've got Maserati, Fiat, Jeep, Alpha, all them, um, like they're all struggling, all yeah, in that they group, are, yeah. So, something, especially Fiat, Fiat, like, doesn't matter, like, they're just solely surviving on the 500 which is like a 12 year old design um <laughs> but like I, something tells me like they're all just gonna die because they're all like holding each other's hands just breathing do you know what i mean yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um i was thinking like um infinity because you don't really see yeah. them make anything <laughs> they've gone the cars they That's have made why. have they Already? Well, they've pulled out of Europe uh, about a year and a okay. half ago. Yeah, yeah, doesn't surprise me. Well, that's another reason why I think you know that they would go even quicker. Yeah, because uh, they've obviously got Europe is quite a big market, where it's maybe even the biggest market for car yeah. sales. Um, and the fact they pulled out of there suggests that it could almost be time. <laughs> One that I mean, the closest I've got is Honda. Um, Oh really? Well, not that I wish they they'd go. I just think, well, what are, what are they for? What is the point? Because <laughs> they they they've had to make themselves more expensive now, um, because um, the likes of Hyundai and Kia are more uh, are like in Honda's price range. So Honda's had to go one better and go more expensive. So you think, well what are you getting for your money because they're now overpriced because the market's constantly moving yeah. up so i just think well are they gonna i don't think they're gonna go but i think that they're gonna struggle um i swear they only make like two or three cars don't they they've got the civic they've got the jazz the and jazz. they've got the um yeah. uh the rvs crv yeah 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 no, they don't. They don't have many. I don't think um, they've got the Honda E, of course. Yeah, um, that's that's oh, brand yeah, new. Yeah. That's 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 actually pretty good. But yeah, no, I don't. I don't wish for them to go. I just I'm questioning uh, their sort of identity and where they're going to be in a few years, sort of thing. Same with yeah, Subaru. Yeah. You know, the, the likes of Land Rover have said, okay, no one's buying four by fours like they used to we're going to make ourselves premium and Subaru have said nah we're just going to keep making cars for farmers and hope for the best <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. because I, like no one really buys their fam Subaru family cars and then they've got no. their, ra their rally mark which is fine but yeah but I really like Subarus so I'd actually be quite sad to see them go because obviously they've got the, all the Impreza range um and they're, they're all really cool cars. They're really powerful. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. they're quite unique. Um, no, they, 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 they're good cars, to be fair. They're really good cars. Um, I mean, I don't wish any of these to go, of course. You know, um, yeah, I just think they're, they're, they're in possible danger. Yeah. So that was this week's edition of the Car Talk podcast, uh, talking about 
our favourite, least favourite and endangered uh, deceased brands um, and of course our latest car news entries as well. Uh, big thanks to Bailey who's joined us today and of course Daniel Acterhouse from Daniel Drives and All Things Auto. If you boys want to plug your social medias, now is the time. Uh, yeah, okay, not a problem. Um, I am on Twitter and Instagram pretty much most of my life, <laughs> so you can see whatever I get up to when I'm not on social media, at DanielCars05. Brilliant. Um, obviously, follow the grand team, which for this video uh, and podcast will be uploaded to. Um, follow us on Instagram, at the grand team. Um, pretty much anywhere, it's at the grand team. So just follow us on pretty much all the social media platforms. <laughs> apart from the ones that we're not on, which is Twitter and uh, I can't remember. We're going to make a Twitter account, so uh, be sure to do follow us when we do make a Twitter account. Um, yeah. And Matty, obviously, subscribe to Matty's Cars yeah. um, and his Instagram and stuff uh, like that. If we're doing all the social medias, it's uh, Matty's Cars on YouTube, of course. Uh, Instagram for some car content, uh, Matty's Cars YT, I think it is. Um, and I'm on Twitter as well, <laughs> at Manning Matty. Um, so yeah, there we go. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for having me no on. No problem at all. Not a problem. It's been great having you, Daniel. It's been a pleasure. I was a bit starstruck, Daniel, because um, I sent you an email a while ago <laughs> and you never replied. So I thought, oh God, he's too busy to reply to. Oh dear. Uh, peasants Ooh, like oh, me. Celebrity fame. No. I'll have to double check. I will have to double check. It's, a, it's about six months ago. It was when I fa first found the the um, was it? the the Yaris video. That's how I found your channel. So I was like, yeah. oh, he lives in Cheshire. I'm going to email him and see if uh, he wants to do any <laughs> car reviews or whatever. You know, it's going to say. Yeah, well, I'm sh I'm sure we can get something sorted. I'll have to I'll have to search back <laughs> on my emails. Yeah. So uh, thank you for listening to this month's podcast. Um, we do hope you enjoyed it um, and make sure you obviously subscribe to all of us and follow us that we just mentioned. Um, stay safe and we'll see you next month. Cheers. Bye. Bye.